change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden and I'm out for a beautiful trail run on Bald Mountain in Bennington, Vermont. And I'm listening to a book called Grit by Angela Duckworth as I'm getting little black flies in my eyes. <laughs> and it's two days after the Cranmore Hill Climb, the race I did this weekend, and my legs are torn to shreds. They are so sore. I'm experiencing what they call DOMS, or delayed onset muscle soreness, from the steep downhills in that race. And DOMS is something that you experience uh, at its peak two days after the effort. So yesterday they were kind of sore, and today they're really sore. It feels like somebody beat me with a lead pipe all over my legs. So I'm out here plodding along through the woods, going really, really slow, and listening to this great book on grit, what it means to be gritty, what it means to persevere, and how does one become a person that can persevere through all kinds of challenge. And this is something that I've been focusing on for this past decade. It's one of the foundational principles of what running raw is all about now. In fact, that word raw really doesn't mean food anymore. Now, to me, it means being vulnerable, putting yourself in a situation unprotected, uh, especially when there could be challenge, when there is um, black flies trying to get in your eyes. It's not about running away from situations that are challenging, but opening yourself up, being vulnerable, being raw, and moving into challenge or towards challenge calmly, patiently, and finding the best, safest, most efficient way through it so that you can get to new growth. So I'm listening to her talk about all these people who she calls paragons of grit, who basically endure all kinds of challenge. And she's talking about them being gritty. And I'm thinking to myself, am I gritty? I've been doing this for 10 years now, running raw. I've been eating what most people consider to be incredibly strict diet which is not 100% raw anymore, by the way. Uh, I no longer think that that is necessary or even the best diet. Uh, I am 100% vegan, and most of what I eat is salad and smoothies and some fruit, but I also have some oats, some rice, some potatoes, uh, uh, and various other things, steamed broccolis and other vegetables. Uh, predominantly whole foods, often added to my salads. Um, but fresh greens and smoothies are still the bulk of what I eat. But even that kind of vegan diet most people think is incredibly strict and limiting. And wow, you've got such great willpower to be able to eat salad every night or to have smoothies every morning. My God, don't you ever get sick of that? Don't you miss this other stuff? You must be so disciplined. And the truth is that I'm not that disciplined. It really doesn't take discipline to do this. And then I go out and I run up mountains every day and I engage in these races on weekends that are incredibly challenging and push me right to the edge and beyond of discomfort. So I'm running and listening to this book and asking myself that question, am I a gritty person? Do I grit my teeth and bear it and fight through it? And the answer is, most of the time, no, I'm not. So a lot of the tools that I present in these videos, especially in my Getting Started series or playlist, is all about getting into action when you're not feeling gritty, getting into action when you're not feeling disciplined, when you don't have a lot of willpower, when you're really leaning towards checking out and engaging in some kind of coping or comforting activity. And what I've learned in these moments is that if you break down the thing in front of you, if you break it down into its component parts and you really get present with those parts, with those steps, you start to see that the fear that you have is not based on the step or the component in front of you. It's based on an association that you have with something in your past, whether it's something that someone said to you or did to you or just a circumstance that arose when you were engaged in a certain activity, or even your own self-talk, how you talk to yourself when engaging in things that are difficult, and how you try to protect your identity or protect your ego or self-concept 
when you engage in something that is difficult. Because if something is difficult, there's a good chance that you could fail. And how does that reflect on you? If you fail in this particular action or activity, does that mean that you are a failure? Or does that mean that you simply didn't accomplish your goal on this particular iteration or step and that there's a possibility that you can get out there and do it again in the future? Do you believe that growth and learning are possible? Or do you believe that failure means that you are permanently marked as a failure yourself? So you avoid engaging in things that are difficult because then people might see that you're a failure rather than engaging in difficult things and realizing, well, failing is just part of the practice. That's how you learn. Failure means that there's new information that you weren't thinking about prior to engaging in the activity. But now that you failed, you realize, oh, well, I didn't consider this and I didn't consider that. And maybe I don't have enough practice in this area. So let me practice more and let me incorporate this new information into the next time I try this. And after practicing with that new information, suddenly it becomes something that you can do. So if you break things down and you look at what's showing up, you look at the step you're about to take, you take that step. Okay, I made the step or I didn't make the step. If I made the step, there's going to be some information. Let's collect it. If I didn't make the step, there's going to be some information. Let's collect that as well. And let's take a look. Let's be really gentle and be present to what's going on up here. Be present to our self-talk. Be present to the associations and attachments that we have that are telling us that we can't do this or we're no good or if we don't do it a certain way, people are going to think poorly of us or I'm going to think poorly of me. Listen to that self-talk. Notice it but don't identify with it. Just hear it as like background chatter in the radio. It's like you walk into somebody's house and the radio or TV is on in another room and you hear it, you know it's there, but you also know that it's not you or it's not the reason that you're there. It's just background chatter and we've got background chatter going on up here all the time, but it's not me. It's just my brain giving me some information thinking that it might be a value to me and I tuned in. Yeah, no, not really a value. So I'm going to get back to being present. And when you do that, it's amazing what you can do without gritting your teeth, without discipline, without determination or dogged perseverance. My legs are beat to hell. I could barely get out of bed today. Just putting my legs over the side of the bed and standing up hurt so bad. But here I am about an hour into this run today. I've climbed about a thousand feet already and I'm feeling good because I'm being gentle. I'm taking nice, easy steps. I'm going slowly. I'm looking around at the environment. I just found a, a deer stand over there that I was checking out and it's got an umbrella on the top of it, which kind of freaks me out a bit because the person wants to be out here in the wild, but yet they want to be protected from the elements while the animals that they're hunting are totally subjected to those elements and just a, a strange thing that human beings do. They bring all this modern convenience up into the wilderness, like me and this phone. And uh, they think they're in the wilderness, but they're not. I'm not. I've got this. I'm, I'm not totally wild right now. I'm just partially wild. Anyway, I'm here because I was gentle with myself. I didn't force myself out the door. I didn't force myself into this run. I got excited about it because it's a nice day to spend in the woods. It's not raining today. It's not too hot. And uh, I love being out here. I have really good thoughts and I listen to good books and that's exciting to me. It doesn't take any grit. Even though I'm hurting, I'm still enjoying this. And I'm not pushing myself. I'm just gently easing my way into it. And the longer this run goes, the more comfortable my legs feel. I'm starting to work through that soreness on this run. But I didn't have to be gritty to do that. So when you listen to books like this, like Grit, there's a lot of great information in there. But don't compare yourself to the people that books like this model as the paragons of grit or the paragons of success. They're different than you. And you don't need to be like them to do what they do. You can find other ways to do that. And that's what this project is about for me. 
taking a very sensitive, prone to depression brain that just loves to check out and disappear for months at a time, taking that brain, taking my genetic tendencies and my early life experiences and creating patterns of behavior that allow me to engage really powerfully every single day, no matter what happens. And I don't have to grit my teeth to do it. I don't have to fight through anything. I can get out and gently get myself in gear by breaking things down into their component steps and then really gently just observing them, exploring them, and realizing that any fear that I might have is not based on them, it's based on the associations that I have from my past. And I can simply notice those, thank them for trying to protect me, and then take an action step anyway. There's an animal over there. Maybe a deer. <laughs> I hope there's some value in there for you. I'm gonna go off and continue my run now and feel that beautiful breeze that's blowing the treetops, and I will see you soon. When you go down, the muscle gets longer under the load instead of getting shorter under a load. This is called an eccentric loading. And when you have an eccentric loading situation, fewer muscle fibers are engaged. When you're going up, when the muscle is getting shorter or contracting, which is the opposite, like flexing a muscle, more muscle fibers are engaged. So going downhill uses fewer muscle fibers and the strain that they're under is significantly greater. Thank <laughs> you.